So this is my ME2900 prototype project. What it is is a dynamic balancer and a dynamic balancer is a measurement system that you use to check the balance of a rotating object. So here's the device uh, in consideration. This is a uh, small motor that came out of an electric drill and it has a rotor that I attached to it. This aluminum rotor right here and the rotor has uh, some additional mass to cause it to wobble when it spins. So there's a bunch of hot glue there and there's also a uh, magnet that adds a little bit of mass to that spot in the rotor. And when this motor is turned on, it shakes, it shakes quite a lot uh, because of that added mass. So basically the way this thing works is up here is the motor controller and it's just a simple PWM circuit that drives a big power transistor and that sends a bunch of current through these wires to power the drill motor. And um, the motor has a couple sensors on it. It's got an accelerometer, and that's um, an ADXL335 accelerometer. And it has a Hall effect sensor also. You can kind of see a small black thing in front of the aluminum rotor. That's the Hall effect sensor that's um, sensing the magnet that's embedded in the rotor. And the uh, accelerometer output goes down this uh, gray cable and then the Hall effect output goes through the BNC cable into the front of the measurement unit. And so this here is the measurement unit. It, um, it has a couple controls. So the main one that's important is this, this knob right here. Um, and basically what this represents is this the angle of this knob represents the angle of the rotor that you're looking at. So um, th what this device is actually doing is it's sensing the acceleration in the x-axis, which is in that direction, as a function of the angle of the rotor. So it can tell you the acceleration when the rotor's here, the acceleration when the rotor's here, 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 anywhere in between. It can tell you where the what the acceleration in the x-axis is as a function of that angle. And so this controls that angle and it displays it as the phase here. So that's 272.8 degrees, that's the phase, um, which is referenced from the, the point that the Hall effect sensor triggers at. So this would be zero degrees here because the magnet, uh, you can't see it, but the magnet's right in front of the Hall effect sensor. And um, at 272.8 degrees, the output, um, the relative output, it's not really in any particular unit, is 463. Um, and that tells you the, the relative magnitude. So you can see the um, magnitude uh, presented on this LCD screen also corresponds to the uh, bar chart display right here. And you can kind of use the bar chart display to find uh, wherever the most significant acceleration is. So you can see right around here, it's pretty high. Um, and it does, it does go off the chart slightly. So. Uh, you kind of have to to uh, go by the LCD screen sometimes when it goes off the chart. That's sort of a bug I need to fix at some point. But uh, it's pretty clear that the, the highest point is, um, I think the highest number I'm seeing is 485, uh, wait, 489. So at 258.7 degrees, that's the, uh, the peak um, acceleration. And 278 degrees is basically when the rotor is right about there. So the mass is on this side, which corresponds with the x-axis, so that, that makes perfect sense. The front panel also has a lot of other controls, which is a little bit confusing because those aren't actually used right now. Um, when I designed this, I intended for the motor to be mounted to a load cell and that the load cell would do the sensing because a load cell can be very sensitive uh, to very small um, vibrations. Whereas these accelerometers are really just intended for use in like cell phones and stuff to sense when you pick up your phone or whatever. And so they don't really have to be very sensitive and they're really not cut out for this task. Uh, but I didn't have enough time to finish the, the amplifier board that would um, amplify the load cell signal. So I ended up just using this accelerometer instead. But all these other controls are for controlling the amplifier board for the load cells. So these would control the zero offset, that would control the gain, this control controls the filter bandwidth, and then uh, that's an extra control for 
uh, setting the mode, the measurement mode. So those aren't really used though. It's mainly just this center control that's the actual uh, control that's important for checking the dynamic balance. So um, you can see there's also a graph on the computer screen, but I think that the uh, sensor is saturated so you can't really see uh, what it looks like because the screen is just white through the video. But uh, there's, there's kind of a, a chart that shows the, um, the acceleration as a function of rotor angle. Okay, so with that explained, uh, I'll do a measurement now. And um, let me set up the computer. I'm just using the serial plotter to reset the Arduino. Uh, but let me start the motor first. So it is variable speed and it's uh, it will give different results depending on the speed, which makes sense because the, uh, the vibrations increase in magnitude with the speed and uh, also there's there's secondary vibration, there's like harmonics that are occurring, you can kind of hear them um, at different speeds. So just going by sound, I think this is going to be a good speed to go off of. Let me start the serial plotter now. And so you can see the LCD screen is displaying the RPM. It's about 11,800 RPM at the moment. And there it is, the measurement's complete. So I'll just turn off the motor now. And there is the chart. Um, and then we can go look around on the angle of the rotor and see if we can find the high point. And uh, yep, once again, it's very close to what we got previously. This is 253 degrees. I think last time was 247, so pretty good agreement there. And uh, the different speed that I ran it at might have some effect on the small difference. So um, that basically tells you, um, I mean, in this case, it's sort of, sort of redundant because it's obvious what side of the rotor is too heavy, but say you just machined this part um, and everything, it, it just looks completely symmetrical, but you're still detecting some vibration. Maybe the aluminum wasn't entirely consistent in its density. Um, that could cause some vibration. So you would use this instrument to tell you which side you need to remove some material from. Um, so that way it would become lighter there and balance the rotor. And then you could spin it at a higher RPM without inducing vibrations that would harm things. Okay, so I think that's pretty much the complete explanation of the project. Um, I guess, uh, I'll just I'll just stop the video now. Thanks for watching.